Ben Wren joins us. He's a founder and chief executive officer at SIG Tech, where they're building AI tools for investors. Uh, ben, welcome back to the show. Thanks for being here. Oliver, good to be here. So catch us up to speed. What have you guys been building since the last time we spoke? Because I've seen some of it, and it's uh, pretty cool stuff. Um, since we spoke last time, um, we have seen major upgrades to the foundational models released by different companies. So I would say now we are officially in the new era of LM can now do most things better than most people. And especially, you know, when OpenAI released OM models a few weeks ago, the models can now actually think. Previously, you know, large language models generate response almost like on a word by word basis. But now the models can think, they can reason over a much longer period of time. This, this is the result of a, a new kind of scaling law, which is called inference time scaling. Essentially, it says when a model thinks 15 times longer, it's equivalent to having received 10 times more training in the, in the training phase. Mm. So that's where everything becoming you know, very interesting and, and the new, new kind of applications are being developed. Um, I've got a few guests that use uh, AI agents like in their trading process and you've seen a lot of big software companies like Salesforce, uh, you see big sales from their AI agents. When we hear that phrase, when folks talk about building their own agent, uh, what are they doing? And I know it's something you're doing as well. Tell us like what that word means in this context now because I hear it a lot. So agent is a piece of software powered by a large language models, and it has certain attributes. It can receive a task from, from a user and be able to autonomously generate a plan, which is broken down into a series, series of steps. And the agent can then work on each step autonomously again um, by accessing data sets and accessing tools until the end when it coll collates all the responses and gave it the entire output back to the user. So we can think of it as, I would say today, much more than an intern. It's more like a colleague you know, who, is, who has 200 undergrad degrees in different subjects and is infinitely patient and always there you know, working for you. Mm -hmm. The um, case that you guys are working uh, uh, with or the, the vertical that you're in is in finance uh, uh, and the uh, applications that um, you're building are geared towards what type of investors? Are they looking for, is it sort of an alternative to an analyst? Is it an alternative to a portfolio manager? What in the financial realm do you see as the low hanging fruit that you're able to pluck through these agents? I think the applications we are working on and the agents we're building are particularly well suited to the convergence of two modalities, which is the numbers and text. To normally of financial institutions, we hire two groups of people, people who are good with numbers and people who, who are good at texts. And we call them quants and analysts. But for the first time, instead of developing two different verticals of text stacks for these two groups of people, we can now build one application around RM that's capable of dealing with both numbers and text. So essentially we are building a new generation of applications that allow a quant to also work like an analyst mm -hmm. and vice versa. I think all these workflows we have taken for granted um, for the last several decades can be revolutionized in the next few years. Uh, how much can the AI do in terms of actually programming a strategy if you uh, tell it what you want? Will it build like an algo even if your algo doesn't, um, doesn't work, doesn't make you money, will it do what um, you've told it to do? Or does the AI have the ability to kind of reason through um, odds of success? I think AI currently um, is particularly good at programming. Um, the, the main reason for this is that actually the, we can generate essentially infinite amount of training samples for programming, you know, because, you know, coding and programming language, they're all structured. We can create essentially infinite amount of synthetic training data. And so the models today are particularly good at this. So we're already seeing programmers inside my company, inside other companies, starting to use AI um, powered um, developers tools, you know, where they can essentially become far more productive than ever before. Um, and now we are reaching a stage where 
all the boilerplate code can be generated and probably should be generated by the AI agents where, so humans can only focus on, you know, the more interesting, more creative and more nuanced aspects of the program that's probably not represented by the by the copious of, 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 of coding available in the public domain. Mm -hmm. So in the next few months, um, everybody essentially can be a programmer. Um, Oliver, you can be a programmer. You can describe what you want and the AI will give you a pretty, pretty good version of it. Mm -hmm. And then you can build on it and improve. Um, that will apply to everybody. Um, when we uh, did our big Schwab Impact Conference with the RIAs, there's, um, you know, and anytime I go to these things, I think about the uh, uh, potential for AI to uh, disrupt and um, to re replace some of the roles uh, to some extent of uh, analysts or advisors. What do you see as uh, being displaced in the financial world? Do, do you see uh, roles that the AI can do right now? Or how do you position your product to folks in that category as advisors? And that's a super fascinating area. So in terms of you know, financial advisory and wealth management, um, I think today uh, the advisors, they are essentially doing two very different jobs. One is to maintain a deep bonding relationship with the customer, essentially understanding the wants and needs of the customer. But on the other hand, they are also spending a lot of time, probably most of the time, on just routine, um, routine processes like you know, generating portfolios, monitors investment returns, and drafting investment proposal to suit to suit the particular you know needs of a client. I think there's this clear separation of these two very different jobs. The latter one, the more boilerplate, the more routine, you know, creating portfolio, backtesting them, analyzing them, will be very suitable for an AI agent to automate and essentially amplify, so that. In the coming years, the advisors will be able to spend more time focusing on what they are really good at and what, what, what we humans really treasure, which is building meaningful and mutually understanding relationships. Mm. Uh, that's a, a good point because then it makes uh, it still good to go out and do a big conference and interact with people. Uh, that's what the humans do. It leaves us something. Uh, ben, thanks for the update on what you're doing. Looking forward to staying in touch. Appreciate you checking in. Thank you, Oliver. Absolutely. Good context for us, Ben Wren, founder and chief executive officer at SigTech on some of the potential disruptive force of AI and ability for LLMs.